you guys see the slides? No. Oh, amazing. I'll just describe them to you. If I sit, can you see me? Can we bring the lights down a little bit so people can see? They're not very good slides. Like, you will not be missing very much. But if this table breaks while I'm sitting on it, or you put your hand, your right hand up. Put your right hands up in the air. I will not tweet a picture of Siri if she falls. <laughs> say it. I will not tweet a picture of Siri if she falls. Thank you. You didn't say it. <laughs> You're very close. Why, why is it so weird? <laughs> not wearing underwear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm here to talk about the Civic Innovation Office. Uh, the first time we ever articulated what that meant, we described it as a bridge between the civic tech community and the people who work for the city of Toronto. So, mission accomplished. I think just you guys being here tonight is, is such a big moment for this. I'm really excited that you're all here. I want to start, I was going to make a joke. You, I make a lot of inappropriate jokes, obviously. And I was going to make a joke when you were talking about your harassment policy, about the fact that I was going to harass a lot of the people who are city staff. But it's actually really important that you have that policy, and I think that as a city and as a tech community, uh, our inclusion and our diversity is a huge value proposition for us. It's a huge asset, and we need to protect that, and we need to really champion that. So I'm, I'm really thankful that you guys have that in place when you talk about it. Um, I just want to, before I get into my presentation, I want to just talk to the staff in the room. There's a lot of city staff here. You're going to hear tonight that, that what we're building here, we're building it for you. We're building it for the people of Toronto, but we're building it for staff. Uh, I apologize that maybe for some of you, this is the first time you're hearing about it. We're going as fast as we can. We're going to do a lot of divisional outreach. We're going to talk to all of you. We're talking to division heads. We're talking to senior management. We want to create the right runway for this, and we want to make sure that we're set up for success. And I want you to know that you're going to hear from us like over and over again. So this, this is not going to be all that you hear. Um, also, the city staff, there's a tendency when we put things on paper to take them very literally. I'm always reluctant to put things on paper because of that. Um, so I want you to know that we're building this as we go. We're building it with you guys. We're building it with staff. We're building it with the public. We're building it with the civic tech community. So this is not like set in stone. This is what we're thinking. This is what we're trying to do. Don't be like, this is exactly how they're going to do it. So that's, that's not the way that this is going to work. So I just want you to know that right out of the gate. Can you guys hear me? Myself. Um, I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives for Mayor John Tory. No one knows what that means. It's okay. It means I meddle in a lot of different things. Um, I'm a cities person. I'm a Toronto person. I used to be a reporter. Uh, I wrote about cities. I was the urban affairs reporter for the Globe and Mail uh, in my last job. From there, I went to go work for Kathleen Wynne when she was a Minister of Municipal Affairs. Uh, very shortly thereafter, she became the Premier. I worked in the Premier's office for the first year and a half of her mandate went to the private sector, worked with a lot of municipal clients, and then got asked um, one year into John Tory's mandate to go and work for him. I do a lot of different things in there, but the first conversation I had with him in his office was about what he wanted to do for the city, and I asked him if he had any interest in engaging in what happens inside government, and looking at the way that we do things and whether we can do things better. And strangely, I actually talked about Bloomberg, and I said that I had read this op-ed when Bloomberg left office in New York, and the op-ed had said that part of his enduring legacy was that he had made city government a place where smart people knew that they could go and do great things. And I think that overall, like a lot of you know that, that's why you're there, but I want that to be the reputation of Toronto, that government is somewhere where smart people can do great things. Um, so that's who I am. Who are these people? You probably can't see these people very well. These are my in-laws. They are very lovely people. They work very hard. They care about their family. They care about their community. They have a flip phone, a really old flip phone that they share. And when they're not using it, they turn it off. <laughs> and my brother-in-law, like it drives him insane that they have this flip phone. He's like, get a better phone. Why don't you get there better phones out there? Use a better phone. They can do all these things. And they're always like, why do we, this is our phone. When we need it, we turn it on, we make a phone call. We've always used this phone. We don't need new phones. We don't understand new phones. Having a new phone be useful. And they, they get really mad. They fight about it. 
Over the years, though, I have kids, and my kids use technology. They use iPads by exposure because I make my in-laws take care of my kids all the time. My in-laws have seen that they can use it for music, that they can look things up, that they see the impact of it and how it can be valuable. And over time and exposure, they saw the value in those tools, and they bought an iPhone, and they bought an iPad, and they've embraced technology because they see its value. They weren't told to do it. It wasn't dictated to them. They saw the value and they embraced it themselves. And I want, like, that to me is what we're trying to do here inside of government. God. Oh, wrong way. So those are my in-laws. This is my city. I'm a city person. And I spent a lot of time in thinking, how do we solve for Toronto? This is what we're all trying to do. This is what the civic tech community is trying to do. This is what city government is trying to do. How do we solve for Toronto, for the people of Toronto? And how do we build its capacity for innovation? That's what we're trying to do. So I think there's different ways of doing that. There's issue-focused innovation, right? We look at the specific things and we say, how can we make them better? There's transit, emergency services, recreation. You guys are going to do your hacks tonight on very specific things that you're going to try and find a better way to deliver against. Issues-based innovation is very important. It's happening all the time. You guys are all doing it. It's so important. But it's not enough if we want to change government. We want to think about the way to change government and how to better serve the public. There has to be system-focused innovation as well. We have to think about what gets in the way of people innovating. Why do my in-laws not want to use the phone even though there are better phones out there? What are the things that they don't know, what's getting in the way, like actually engage with that and try and make it better. And in city government, it's not a criticism, it's just a reality. There are culture problems, there are, there's inertia, there are things that haven't changed in a long time. There's procurement issues. We work in very siloed divisions. If you know anything about the city, it's set up in divisions and departments, and there's not a lot of interaction um, between those necessarily. There's risk aversion. We have to report everything out by budget. We have to defend everything we do. We do everything very publicly and in the media. And it's scary, right? You don't want to screw anything up. You don't want to fail because you have to answer for those failures very publicly. There's budget constraints, right? We have like a specific revenue stream. There's things that we have to pay for. There's a huge amount of pressure. Can you justify in, like investing in a new tool or a new way of doing things if you don't know what it's going to like result in for the public? It's hard to do that. These are all the systemic things that we have to think about when we talk about why we can't innovate, why we can't change, and we have to start pulling these apart. We start have to start breaking through these if we want to actually um, do things a little bit differently. I'm really dry now. So that brings us to where we are today. These are the things we think about in the mayor's office and in the city. There's lots of people who think about these things all the time. And randomly, last fall, um, the Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies approached me in our office and said, we'd like you to apply to be part of um, this cohort of iTeams that we have. You know, Bloomberg was the mayor, they learned a lot about cities, and he's dedicated himself and a lot of his former senior staff and a lot of his personal wealth um, to helping solve for cities like Toronto. And so they have these iTeam cohorts. They understand that a lot of people who are innovating in government are doing so off the side of their desks. They're doing so because they love it and they volunteer with the innovation lab and they think about these things and they come to hack nights. But it's not their job, right? They're doing it off the side of their desk. And so the, the iTeam program is designed to build capacity for innovation. It's said, we're gonna give you the money. You don't have to justify it. We're gonna give you the money and you're gonna hire some people who do this all the time. So that's kind of, uh, that was the opportunity, and we were actually the first Canadian city to ever be selected as, a, as part of the iTeam cohort. So this year it's us, Anchorage, Detroit, Austin, Baltimore, Beersheba, and Durham, North Carolina. There might be one more, but I don't remember what it is. And yeah, it's about building capacity for innovation. They're very smart, they've been through it a few times, they're learning as they go like hire people, give them the staff, like give them the equipment that they need, set them up in the right place, give them some runway, and then let them help the people that you have already doing this. So the mandate, 
Um, with this money, we're setting up a civic innovation office. The name is like totally on the table. If you have better ideas, like please shout them out. We have no idea what to call this thing. We're going very literal at this point. Um, the Civic Innovation Office is going to work with divisions to identify a major civic challenge to be addressed. We have three years of funding. We're going to do a different challenge every year. We're going to do a cohort of solutions every year um, as proof of concept that we can do things a little bit differently. We're going to be engaging in an innovative process of design thinking. I know you like hearing people say design thinking in the back, so we're going to say that a lot. Uh, and data analysis to identify like what's the real problem we're trying to solve. Let's not get too in the weeds on one specific thing. Big picture, what are we trying to solve for in Toronto? What's the best way to do this? Let's stop for a second and really think about what's the best way to do it. Sometimes it's through technology, sometimes it's through policy, sometimes it's through space or communications or nudges. We're gonna actually really engage with that and find the best way to have some impact. And fundamentally for city staff, we're centralizing and operationalizing innovation. We're creating a safe space for you guys to innovate. And that means somewhere where you can test new approaches and solutions, and that's short form for like an alternative procurement model in case you weren't sure. This is a way for you guys to actually partner with people outside the building that perhaps you wouldn't have gotten to partner with through the traditional um, systems and processes. And as I said, we're going to co-create um, annual cohorts of solutions in partnership with outside innovators. We're going to do this with you. This is the public service and the public doing things for our city together. And we're going to support and build capacity for innovation within the city. We're going to, we're going to do that by actually innovating. We're going to learn by doing. We're going to change by doing, not by some you know, chief officer telling us that we're all going to change at the same time. We're going to prove it out. So, the office, um, we have budget to hire three people. Um, we've hired a director. She's an external hire, she's a she. Yay. Uh, we wanted somebody uh, who was an experienced innovator with an agile development background, somebody who could actually deliver solutions. We recognize that a lot of time in government we talk about these things and then we don't deliver, we don't actually produce anything and we know that to actually get some credibility to show people to make them trust us, to make you guys trust us. We have to actually ship some solutions. So we want somebody with some experience doing that. She's also gonna promote the vision. She's gonna oversee the process and the deliverables. We're gonna announce who she is. We're gonna bring her out and show you all, well, all of you to her, but we're gonna, we're gonna launch the office as an office. This is not about one person. This is about an office. This is about a team that's here to work with all of you. And so we're gonna launch the office and we're going to launch the office when we actually know what we're doing uh, a little bit more, right? This is not, we're not just going to say innovation and put a person up on a pedestal. We're actually going to show you what we're going to do. We're also hiring a design strategist that was actually part of the mandate of the, the Bloomberg money this year, to like hire a design person. You need those skills. There's not a lot of capacity for design or design thinking within government right now. It's a hugely valuable thing. So have somebody who knows about that, who can do it, but who can also teach it, who can also show why it's important and sort of bring people along with them. And we're also gonna hire a program manager. Right from the beginning, it was very clear to us that this was gonna be an internal hire. Government is complicated. The Toronto government is insanely complicated. We have like, 44 divisions, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Looking to the city manager's office. Um, it's complicated. We have to have procurement in line. We have to have IT in line. We need somebody who can make sure that all of those pieces of the puzzle are in place so when we build something, we can implement it. We're not gonna build something or come up with a solution and then not be able to do it. I know you guys have experienced those frustrations before. We're gonna try and get ahead of that. Um, and that's what that person's job group is gonna be. It's gonna be super easy. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of like the specific design of this. We're still doing it. We're going to go out and talk to all the divisions. We're going to talk to a lot of people. I don't want you guys to get too married to like, oh, is that the process they're going to have? We don't know. We're figuring it out. Okay? We're figuring it out. <laughs> but I will tell you what we are going to do. We're going to move fast. Uh, it doesn't feel like it all the time, but we're moving as fast as we can. And we're going to keep moving fast. We're going to make ourselves move fast. We're going to think big. We want to actually think about real problems that the city is facing. We're going to have specific um, interventions underneath that. It's not just going to be one big thing. It's not a think tank, um, but we're going to think big. We're going to champion data. 
Um, we're going to really try and champion a lot of things that I think can have a long-lasting impact for the city. We're going to focus on public-facing outcomes, right? I think a lot of the time we get into the habit of talking about like our own systems and our own divisions and why we need to do things. But when we start talking about the public, this is about serving the public better. This is about actually making sure that they're living, um, you know, the city that we want them to live. Then it's harder to argue. I think I hope that people will find it harder to argue with me. Um, we're going to take a portfolio approach. We're going to do a lot of things under these cohorts. Some of them will be big, some of them will be small. We want some quick wins because we have to demonstrate that we're actually doing this. Um, so there's going to be a variety of things under these banners. We're going to engage. We're going to talk to all of you inside and outside of government. We're going to try and really listen. Um, we're going to be busy. The team that we put in place is going to be busy, but we're going to have a system to engage with everyone um, so they feel heard and they feel like they're participating. We're going to communicate. So much of this is like telling stories. Part of the amazing process of this for me has been hearing the stories of people who are already innovating within government. I wanna tell those stories. There are incredible things being done every day by the civic tech community as well. We need to tell those stories and why they matter so we can get buy-in for this work. And we're gonna deliver. We're gonna actually, like, I hope, do some real things. I really hope so, because I've been spending a lot of time on this. What we're not gonna do we're not going to force people to participate. I think it doesn't work in city government, particularly in our city government. If you say everybody has to do this, we're not going to do that. We're going to let people self-identify. There are people, I know there are people in this room who want to do this already, who know exactly what they would do. We're going to let people self-identify. We're going to give everybody the chance to be involved, and we're going to let you come to us. Um, because we're not going to force anybody to do this if they don't want to, if they're not ready, if they don't have the resources, if they don't feel it matters to them. We're going to let people self-identify. We're not going to make assumptions. I don't want you guys to make assumptions either about what this is or what it's not. We're going to have a level of candor, I think, with each other and with the people we work with, and we want that candor back. We're not going to make everybody happy. I'm sure when we come out with a cohort, like half the city will roll its eyes. That's fine. I get that. I'm like trying to think of something that everybody will like. But I think you just have to realize that. And the nice thing about the funding and the nice thing about the three years is like, maybe you'll like cohort number two, maybe you'll like cohort number three. Um, but I think we need to understand we're not, we're not gonna fix everything. But we're gonna try and fix some of the systems so you guys can fix everything. Uh, and we're not gonna get distracted. Um, I think when we put this team out there, we're trying to create some space for them too. I think there's a lot of interest in this. I think everybody's gonna want like to talk to them and invite them to things and give them a microphone and we want them to be out there. We want them to be engaging, but we want them to work and we want them to deliver. And so we're gonna try and keep them focused on that. I use this slide again because I feel like they're looking at me like, bitch, please. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Are we trying to drive culture change or what? Or are you more kind of like a small street prototype shop? It's both. When I think about I, I think about it in terms of like a Venn diagram. So the three things I'm trying to achieve for is like public facing outcomes. Like we actually want to change something that the public will see, deliver them some a new service or a new something. Um, I want there to be ideally some sort of like back of house enhancements, things that will change the way we actually do things in science and improve some processes, make sure that our city staff are using their skills and aren't doing things just the same old way. They're actually able to engage in their, their work and use their skills the best um, way possible. And through that, the third thing is culture change. We're not going to say this is about culture change. I hope that there will be culture change as a result of this. But yeah, mostly we're a little prototyping shop. Skunk works. Uh, I'm just curious to know whether uh, Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies has a system whereby uh, the cities that are involved in the cohort um, share ideas, like just you know, cross pollinate. Um, yeah. Did everybody hear the question? No. So yeah, absolutely, I think that is the idea. And when we talk to city staff, and if people want to talk to me about this more, I can tell you more about the program and what, what their expectations are. There are expectations from the 
um, the funder. They have things that we, they want us to do, and you know, money with strings attached, but they're good strings. Um, I think we're in an amazing time for cities. There's so much leadership being shown by cities. A lot of us are dealing with the same things at different levels, housing, you know, the regulation of Uber and Airbnb, marijuana legalization, or not legalization, I don't know what's happening there. Um, you know, we can learn a lot from each other, and so yeah, absolutely part of this is they're creating a network of best practices that you can lean on. We're also the fourth year, I think, in the cohort, so people do it in three years. So there's some people who are quite a ways into this, and they've already done stuff, so I'm hoping, and we haven't started this, project, this process um, in earnest yet, but that we can like scan the list and be like, okay, they already did something on this. Can we just have that? Like, can you just tell us about that? I'll introduce you to the people over here who are doing that too. So yeah, absolutely, we're hoping to learn um, from those cities, and there's an expectation that we really engage with them. It out. One more question. Yeah. I, I think I can talk loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> so representing the IT community in the city, what are your plans on how you're envisioning you're going to actually engage IT professionals that are in the city that want to help the innovation office and help the city deliver those, you know, those meet those needs and solve those problems? Um, I didn't get into a lot of how we're actually setting this up I, in the presentation because I didn't know there would be so many city staff here. Um, but I'll get into it in a little bit because I think it'll help answer the question. The, the Bloomberg, are, they're very American. They're used to a strong mayor American system. So they asked the mayor's office to apply for this grant. I was the grant applicant and the grant recipient. But like I'm under no illusions that I can do this or that it should live in the mayor's office. And so the first conversation was with the city manager's office. And I was like, this needs to live with you. This needs to be in the middle of government. This needs to be somewhere the divisions can feed in. So that these people are going to work for you, but I'm not going away. <laughs> so we set up a bit of an oversight panel. We have a group of people involved um, who are going to have, who have been helping us hire. They've been on the hiring panel. And they're part of that program manager piece. We recognize that there, there are pieces that need to be engaged in this right from the beginning, including IT and all the people in IT and all the people in procurement, all the people who are already doing the work who are gonna make sure that anything that we do can seamlessly integrate and be applied and all those things. So Rob Meikle is part of that group. He has been doing all the hiring with us. He spent the last two days with us um, with the Bloomberg people who were visiting. He is intrinsically involved in this, and we're trying to make sure we have the chief corporate officer, I don't know for people who like don't work in the city if this means anything, but we have the chief corporate officer, the head of purchasing, um, the, who else do we have? City manager's office. Yeah, just shout it out. Yeah, we have, we have those people. So yeah, there is, um, so there's that sort of steering committee um, that's in place. I really want this to have, um, sort of a mandate from the center. I think we don't do that enough in, in the city where we say, listen, this is important for all of us. This is not about some divisions. This is not about IT and ECDEV. This is not just about parks and transportation. This is about the whole city. And so we're trying to actually build it out in an intentional way. And, and again, like I apologize if this is the first time that you're hearing about this, but part of the reason for that is like, We've been spending a lot of time like getting the city manager on board, getting the DCMs on board, getting this group on board, making sure that like everybody in the middle buys in and then we're gonna go out to divisions and we're gonna go out to staff, we're gonna go out to everybody, but we don't wanna start having side conversations with staff about what do you wanna do and then have you being like, I don't know, does Rob know about this? Does like Peter know about this? We wanna make sure we do it in the right way, but the answer is like absolutely, yeah, you guys are gonna be involved. And if you have ideas of how, like come and tell me. Thank you so much.